Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to episode 33 of the Sharpshooters Podcast. I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Shaw, aka Mr. B Shaw, on the ones and twos. Appreciate everybody for coming out, showing love to the pod as always. Uh, everybody couldn't make it on tonight, but I got a couple of my fellas, you, just a couple of familiar faces as always. But um, before I bring them up, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Still pushing that uh, 500 subscribers. And got a special, uh, special, special guest, hopefully uh, coming up soon. Uh, very, very soon on one of the later shows, but that's just a surprise. You'll you'll just have to catch that. But without further ado, the fellas, as always, Mister the Haven Moore, my brother from well, another. Without, we back. You already know. In the man cave. Oh yeah, man. Go Braves. And, and go Braves. And my man gonna get a ring. So when he get a ring, that gonna be the <laughs> high, the uh highest uh view show because he got gonna have a real life ring. Yup. Yes, sir. Stunned on, stay, stunned on y'all haters. And we know there's a few of y'all to be watching. Hating, yeah, perpetrating, all that good stuff. But as always, my main man Tiz from the four six. And got a nice gaming chair. Oh, yeah. oh, look at that with the logo <laughs> on it. Oh, yeah. We pubbing his wife. So make sure if y'all want y'all one, it's coming out soon. We don't know yet, For but sure. it's coming soon. Coming soon. So y'all uh, stay tuned to that. We ain't going to be on here too long tonight for y'all. But first, we just going to... Uh, Talk about a few topics, but you know it's that time of the year. It's the NBA playoffs, but before that, you get the NBA play-in tournament, ladies and gentlemen. The NBA play-in tournament currently, as we record, the Lakers are currently winning against the Pelicans, and then you got the um, Warriors going against the Kings tonight. Is it the Kings? Yeah. Yeah, so... The winner of this uh, Pelicans and uh, Lakers game, they going to play the Nuggets. And the winner of the uh, Warriors and uh, Kings play for the A seed. So, man, it's, it's, we got some good games coming on, man. So, yeah, turn up, turn up, all that good stuff. And I forgot what the uh, East looking like right now. I know it's the Hawks. The Hawks playing somebody. The Bulls. The Hawks playing the Bulls. Man, the Bulls made it. Oh wow, that's, that's shocking. They playing for the um, who's playing for the A? Yeah. Uh, AC and whoever wins out of the Heat and Seventy Six is gonna play for the seven seed. So that should be interesting. Right. That's crazy. That that is that far apart. But oh well. Well, uh, some of you, who y'all got winning these games? Um, says you want to go first. Um, yeah, I can go first. Well, so I'm taking the Lakers because they playing now and they winning. So <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with them. Um, go out on the limb, say they're gonna pull it off. Uh, so that Warriors will. That Lakers Pelicans game is is one of these like if they win, your reward is you get to play the Denver Nuggets. So I don't know how excited they'll be about that, but that'll be a, a good matchup either way. Uh, Warriors Kings, I think the Warriors probably probably pull that off. Also, although Kings, a lot of young talent, man, they they could they could surprise you. Talking about a one game scenario, uh, they could they could they could. They could definitely pull it off, man. Uh, but I think you get a big game from Steph uh, in this situation. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Warriors on that. Um, Heat and Sixes. That's an interesting game right there. Uh, 
everything in me wants to wants to go with Miami. So I'm gonna go with Miami because I just think that Miami in the playoffs has a different gear uh, that they go to. Spo really gets those boys up to play in the playoffs. We all know Jimmy Buckets turned into playoff Jimmy. Uh, I expect to see that tomorrow. Um, and then that Hawks and Bulls game, that could go either way, honestly, man. It just depends on who shows up, you know. Um, yeah, like Brisky, I'm just shocked that the Bulls made it. So I saw it, it was like, oh. Yeah, man. These I, I was just looking at it. I was like, <laughs> last time I checked, buddy, he boy having an awful season. Yeah, yeah. Unless you tells you a lot about the East over there. It's really, it's really just been the Celtics and then everybody else. So, and the Knicks. Yeah, and the, and the Knicks doing pretty good too. Yeah, I can't, I can't take nothing away from them. Yeah, they bought it. They they won fifty. So in that in that game, man, I'm gonna go with the Hawks, bro. I'm gonna go with the Hawks. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Trey and the Hawks. All right, what you got, Dave? Right, you man. did all you did all the game? Yeah, it's just for them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I had to make sure. Yeah. All right, so uh I played devil's advocate today, man. <laughs> Here we go. I see a comeback tonight, man. I see a comeback. I see I see Zion balling out, man. I see BI coming out, man, just shooting the lights out in the last quarter, man. I think it's gonna be a comeback, comeback win for the Pellies. Uh, but nah, realistically, man, I think I think the Lakers gonna pull it out, man. That's just that's wishful thinking. I would love to see somebody new, but hey, it is what it is. Bron balling, he older man is still kicking ass how he needs to be. It's pretty cool. Um, Warriors Kings, I would love to see De'Aaron. Yeah, De'Aaron from hey, he from my hood, man. Like I love to see De'Aaron come out doing stuff, man. Um, but. And, and the funny thing with this Warriors team, bro, it's like you cannot – it's like Curry's like like Mahomes, man. You can't bet against Curry. I mean, it's Steph. Steph going to shoot and he going to ball. It's a different type of dude in the playoffs, man. You're not dealing with any mediocrity from the Warriors when it comes to balling out in the playoffs. And they showed that with that last ring that they got. You know, as long as you got that, that core three with Draymond – Clay and Steph, man, them boys are gonna do something stupid. So, uh, just based off experience, man, I gotta go with the Warriors, man. But see, they got the same record, same exact record to be to be exact. But the young bulls is fire, man. Like, you know, the, the Kings ain't nothing to play with either, man. And um, but if I'm just going off from what I know. I know the Warriors, man, and they they not nothing to play with, man. But I would love to see the Kings pull it off. So I'm gonna go with the Warriors. Uh take take any biases out of it. I'm gonna go with the Warriors. Uh Heat 76ers. I'm definitely going with the Heat on this one. Again, the Heat are just a different type of beast. Jimmy Butler on playoff mode is a different type of guy. Uh they got a lot of nice pieces, man. I think that they're gonna pull that off. And Hawks, Bulls, I'm going to go with my with my Hawks, man. Even though I think the Bulls got a lot more talent on their team, honestly. I feel like uh, – but then again, I can't, I can't take – I can't take away from, from Murray and them, man. Like, you got Murray, you got Trey. I'm going to go with Atlanta on this one, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Bulls shock us, man. Because they got those veterans. They got them, them boys who who really, you know what I'm saying, they playing for something. Is DeRozan still playing or is he hurt? I haven't been watching him enough. I assume. I think man, he like, Okay, so if DeRozan playing in that, man, the Hawks don't have a little bit of an issue. The Hawks have a worse record than Chicago, but still. Um, Kobe White been balling. Yeah, Kobe, yeah, you got Kobe White. You got Zach. You got – uh, you got the Rosen, you got uh, Ao, you got you got a bunch of cats on that team, man. Who just they 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 a little bit hungry, man, to make it into the playoffs this year. And I don't know if Atlanta really, 
Atlanta's fire, bro. Don't get it, don't get it wrong. I like I like the the core two players. I don't like the rest of the team. All right. Um, I'm going to say for mine. I'm going to say I'm going to say Lakers going to win. Then I got the Warriors beating the Kings, and then I'm gonna have. The Heat beating the 70 Sisters and the Hawks going to be, I mean, the Bulls, the Bulls beating the Hawks and then Bulls going to beat um, the 70 Sisters to get the last playoff spot. And I got the Warriors beating the Pelicans. So then the playoffs will definitely be set for that. But I'm, I'm looking at it, bro. I kind of hope <laughs> now. Now I kind of hope that the Sixers win the first game uh, against uh, the Bulls. I mean, against the the Heat, and then the Heat win their next game so that they they get to play uh, Boston in the first round. I wouldn't mind seeing Heat Boston first round matchup. I think that'd be dope. Mm. Well, <laughs> only time will tell. But let's go ahead and get to this other topic. The good old WNBA draft. We probably the only podcast that talks about more WNBA and women basketball than probably outside of the women's <laughs> podcasts that actually talk about them. But so shout out to the Sharpshooters podcast that deserves a lot of credit. <laughs> but um, last night we had the uh, WNBA draft, of course, as expected by people who actually know the game. Caitlin Clark went number one. Then Cameron Beck, Cameron Brick, uh, she went number two. And Camilla Cardoza went number three. And I think Angel Reese went seven. Yeah. But her and Camilla are teammates for the uh, Chicago Sky. Uh, I was trying to see what you guys' thoughts on the uh, draft, but I'll just get mine real quick. Right. Uh, no, no, no. Matter of fact, y'all go ahead. Oh, um, I thought it was pretty dope, man, to see uh, Reese and Cardoza go on the same team, man. Uh, them girls have been battling it out throughout the NCAA careers, even high school. Them girls been duking it out, going back and forth. And to see Chicago pull it off and get both of them on the same team was really cool, really cool situation. I think that's going to be very exciting for the WNBA. Uh, I'm, for the first time, excited for the WNBA in a long time, probably since Brittany Griner. Uh, she's from H-Town, uh, to put that back out there. Uh, to see since Brittany Griner, since BG got drafted, uh, I think this is like the most exciting time to actually watch the WNBA. Um, I feel like people's eyes have been glued on these college girls, man, for these past two years at least. And man, it's gonna be really fun to see Caitlin Clark. She went number one to see Caitlin Clark coming to the WNBA and shut all the critics up. You got a lot of people saying, um, she ain't ready or she ain't got enough in her bag for it it's a different type you know she's dealing with all these other women but none of these women shoot like her and uh she's a sharp shooter she's about to be the steph curry of the wnba i'm calling it now and uh we're gonna get some exciting wnba highlights this year uh on another note i don't know if angel reese is about to make a, a crazy impact coming in right now i think cardoza will I think Reese is gonna have to get adjusted uh, to playing against these grown women, and she's gonna be playing against a lot of a lot of big bullies out there, man. Uh, she ain't gonna be like just running through these shorties like she was in college, man. You know, so uh, hopefully we see a lot of cool stuff from Reese. I don't know if she's gonna have to switch positions or something, cause man, you know, it's gonna be a little different for her in the WNBA, and she got to get in her bag for real, like. You know, she she get away with with that inside game, but I don't know if that's gonna necessarily work if it's gonna translate in in uh with these grown women in the WNBA. But yeah, man, cool draft. 
fun to see uh these hbcu girls uh get into the draft uh you know it's it's pretty dope man it was a good draft man yeah for sure uh got to see of course if, i think everybody in america knew that uh caitlin clark was going first if she hadn't went first it would have been a tragedy uh but yeah to see indiana fever get the their point guard of the future uh they got uh boston already there um i can see them winning the championship soon I, i'm not not within like a year or two i think i still think the las vegas aces is I mean the team to be yeah yeah they, their roster is just amazing um so and and then to see um uh, cardoza and and uh angel reese go to the same team going to play for Teresa weatherspoon in chicago uh a fast-paced team uh i think those two players probably exactly what they need they didn't have a lot of size anyway you got cardoza coming in at six seven uh and the way they run, if you're a running team, uh, that's exactly what you need. Somebody come in there and get rebounds. They they both can run the floor. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you see them together, though. Uh, just – and the only reason I say that is because I think Angel Reese – I think Cardosa's game, probably she doesn't have to do much to make an impact at the center position right now. She already runs the floor well. She already rebounds. And uh, with Angel Reese, she rebounds well. Offensive rebounds, excellent. Uh, but you're already getting that in Cardoza. I think offensively, she's going to have to pick up her game a little bit. I'd love to see her with a little mid-range game, uh, more polished in the post, because I think she's probably going to end up having to play the four. Uh, if not, she's be coming off the bench as a five. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a coach, but uh, that was dope to see. Uh, there's a couple, a couple of other picks. I mean, Las Vegas Aces, Aces got the Asia Fair, um, a lightning rod player, super fast. And you talking about the rich, just rich. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> still at a draft. I think champions get. I mean, one of the most athletic players in the draft. Uh, but yeah, it was dope to see, man. I think this was like what the first time they sold tickets to it. I think in the history of it, yeah, it was dope to see, bro. Just to see them support, man, and see the girls. They 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 all got dolled up and they was all excited, man. It was it was it was an event, man. I love it. I hope they keep it up. Yeah. Hopefully the WNBA like does something with these female rappers too. Get these female rappers up there to the games, man, and come perform or something, man. Get Glorilla at the at the game or something. It ain't got nothing to do with them. It just if they want to come, it ain't about them. They nah, gotta be willing to come. I feel you, man. I feel but uh, but I'm with you on that. But uh, my my thoughts, of course. It, it doesn't surprise me, uh, Caitlin going number one, her and uh, Leah Boston. It was pretty much set last year when oh, I can't even say, yeah, last year when they um uh, had the lottery and then it land uh to the Indian fever. I was like, well, Leah Boston and Caitlin Clark, that was like <laughs> pretty much like the Wimby uh sweet stage, you pretty much knew who was getting drafted. Mm -hmm. Or whatnot. And uh I gotta see how this uh Angel Reese and Cardoza thing gonna work out. I don't know. Like of course they're gonna be the the twin towers down there, but is it I just gotta see it, man. I'm like, do you have enough offensive game? Because you're going into a league where these are pretty much no scrubs <laughs> because the league is so small with with teams is really no scrubs. You're pretty much going against some of the top talent. Well, it ain't there ain't no scrubs, period. But hey. Um Angel Jackson that plays for uh Jackson State that just made it to the uh WNBA. So that's what's up, man. I'm just happy for uh her. 
being the uh, only HBCU uh, player to get drafted. I think she was two-time uh, SWAT player of the year. So that's what's up on her part, man. And hopefully uh, she made the team. And uh, fair. Oh, my God. The ace. Aces, bro. Yeah. They just, they just got rich. I was just like, I don't know how she fell out the first round. I have no idea. But but uh, I don't know who just made this girl more hungry. I was like, okay. I can see them repeating because all only thing they they got Angel Jackson too. Uh, the Aces. So they are just like literally the most talented team in the WNBA easily. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me one bit. So we'll I'm see. Angel dropped in that draft down to pick seven, though, man. Like it it no, why? <laughs> That's I'll always where she been mocked for. Yeah. All right, man. Just the fact that Chicago got both new girls is crazy to me, man. But they they don't have any bigs though. They didn't have any bigs, so they 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 was gonna take two bigs anyway. Probably makes sense. Makes sense. But yeah, what's what's good? What's cool about this, man, is you don't have to wait long. We're not gonna have to wait long to see these players. Like the season start, like what next month? Yeah, the preseason start like next month sometime, like I'm, beginning I'm, of next month, I think. I'm definitely going to see the Atlanta Dream versus uh versus Caitlin, dog. I gotta see that. <laughs> versus the Fever. I gotta see that. So yeah, she got she got more people on her team now, man. You can you you can call it by the team, you don't have to call it versus Caitlin. Hey man, I just I just had to, you know, I, I corrected it. Well, I'm just saying, you know, I, I, I had to uh you know, I got to go to that game, man. I'm I'm end up missing the Chicago game. Man. I ain't going to be able to see my girl Angel Reese, man. It's, I got to work, you know, Braves. Man. It's crazy. But, but, but can't wait to see them play. Uh, definitely going to uh, try to catch that Atlanta game for Caitlin and Aaliyah Boston. They need to put that in a big arena. Hopefully they do because yeah. that one's going to be <laughs> – it's going to be a lot of folks at that game. Facts. But Facts. Uh, the one thing last night, <laughs> and hopefully I spelled that right. <laughs> I think I did. Not <laughs> I know, man. Somebody said I spelled something wrong one time. I looked at it. I'm like, man, I ain't spelled nothing wrong. <laughs> I was looking too quick, man. They were just messing with me. But um, it was talking about the uh, – one of the shocking things last night, it shouldn't have been shocking to nobody, but clearly you we have new fans that swear they've been watching WNBA basketballs, know-it-alls, and all that. It's only certain people that uh, I would listen to uh, that know the game, the Ashley Coast game. Shout out to my girl, Natasha. And she's pregnant. She about to have that baby soon. So I want to give a shout out to her. But uh, definitely not talking about you. But uh, just certain folks, man, just with this pay scale. I'm like, bro, it's it's so simple. It's really just supply and demand. It, it's just like pretty much business one-on-one, bro. What? It, it, if you want to see these women get paid, this money instead of you complaining go to the game buy merch watch it when it's on tv it's that simple it is literally that simple it's nothing hard it's literally that good. and the tickets are not high <laughs> that's the crazy thing the tickets are not high support the women oh i forgot it's too many women hating on other women, aka Kaylin Clark, because the Golden Goose is in the WNBA right now. Y'all should be milking this right now. You should be milking every last bit of Kaylin Clark to the world to get more people in there so you guys can get paid. Even if you are jealous of her, milk it. For your selfish reasons, I think they are fumbling the bag very, very badly in the WNBA right now because they don't want to uh, support this girl 
and whatnot. And the thing is, she it's not like she just does crazy stuff. She just plays basketball, and that's it. She doesn't complain. Like, when, like just talking about, like, oh, you fouling me hard or whatnot, but she don't do anything to, like, make people actually hate her. I don't, I don't understand it, man. So, but uh, what's y'all thoughts on this? Because I absolutely hated this when they uh showed the pay scale and folks were complaining like they didn't know this. Like, oh my god, they gotta uh get more money. And I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna be done with this. This man Russell Wilson said, "I seen this man. I almost died laughing." I said, "This this is the problem," and he may go to the game. But when he said this, this is pretty much what a lot of folks say. He said, oh, they deserve, I'm just paraphrasing, and I hopefully get a majority of it right. Talking about, oh, oh, they need to make more money and basically say I'm praying for them. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you can do that. You can actually go to the game, too, and do all the three things I just said you can do. Sure. But Don't let hey, money leave. I'm like, bro, come on, man. This, this, this is really not hard, man. That's why I said you got this golden goose. Trust me, the Indiana Fever game is going to be packed. <laughs> it's going to be packed like when Tamika uh, catches with it. <laughs> but it's, I think it's on a different level right now. But what's y'all thoughts on on this whole pay scale or whatever? Hey, this is all this, man. It's just nonsense at this point. I'm with you on it, man. Uh Yo, if 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 y'all want, if the people out there really want to see these women make more money and get on an equal pay scale, then go support the game, support the team, support these women. It's like crazy. WNBA numbers don't even do the same numbers as the women's uh, college women basketball. It don't do the same numbers, and it's like, you know. It's a disconnect, dog, when it comes to these pro teams, man. Uh, some of our favorite pro teams aren't here anymore in the WNBA, especially the uh, Comets, you know what I'm saying, four, four back-to-back championships, and they couldn't even last in the league. So, you know, like I said, man, I, and I'm with you on this, Brinsky, like if they want these women to make more money, go buy a jersey, Go support the games. Get some season tickets. They, they, you know, the season. Everything cheap in the WNBA. Everything cheap. You, you can literally, you can support WNBA for like twenty dollars, and, and you almost on the floor. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, hey, support the teams, man. And I feel like this year, the teams that's gonna get the biggest support, you're gonna see a big jump in Chicago for sure. You definitely gonna see a big, a wait, man. Look, the Fever. They games, they gonna they gonna have the most the most people at their games this year, man. I think so. I think more more and more people are gonna come out this year, and then their pay scales will go up. But but what people are forgetting in the NBA, our greatest legends didn't even see the big dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of these cats didn't really start seeing big big money until the 80s and 90s and stuff like that. The league been around over 100 years. So it's like, well, if I'm not mistaken, it's been around about that long, if not a, over 100 years. So it's just like, come on, man. Like some of these guys, like uh, some of the biggest champions, Bill Russell didn't see them type of checks. You know what I'm saying? He never got to see a, I don't think he ever got to see a million dollar salary check, did he? Probably not. Probably, Probably. not. Probably, so, probably, probably career earnings. Yeah, career probably. earnings for sure, but not no. not yearly million dollar checks no. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. No, it wasn't mm-hmm. going down like that. So, and the NBA is a brand that had to be built up. It had to be built up to what it is today. They had to put certain marketing strategies in place, uh, put certain players in the forefront for it to get to where it's at. The big blast in the 90s for us growing up as kids was seeing MJ and, and you know, seeing the Iversons. And then we got to the Mellows and the Bronze. They need to do the same thing in the WNBA. All these girls that, you know what I'm saying, hot commodities out here, blast them in the front. You know what I'm saying? They got to do something different, man. They marketing strategies are trash over there in the WNBA. 
it's a lot of whining and it's not enough uh it's not enough uh progressive movement in, in, as far as getting to the dollars with the WNBA and they gotta mm-hmm. do something man they gotta do something different so that's where I'm at with it, man. It's just you can't cry over over spoiled milk, man. If you're not supporting, if you're not watching the games, you're not going to the games, you're not buying jerseys and merch. They're gonna stay at this uh seventy thousand uh, dollars, you know, sixty, seventy thousand, fifty thousand. Some of these girls ain't even making that. So it's just like, come on, man. Like, you know, hell, they could have got degrees and went and did other things. You feel me? Like, you know, well, they did, but I'm just saying they could have, you know, yeah. been doctors or something, man. Uh, yeah. My wife making more money than Caitlin Clark right mm-hmm. now. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, hey, but she ain't seen them in them endorsements, though. <laughs> you're right, but I'm yeah, saying not- as far as as far as yeah, I, know, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking you about. You know what I'm saying? They gotta do. You know, they gotta they gotta do something. At least the hottest players gotta get at least a honey. Yeah, Kaylin should at least got a honey piece, man. You know what I'm saying? Like split mm-hmm. that honey up. You know what I'm saying? Like they could have did something for Kaylin, man. I mean, she gonna make three hundred and sixty six, I think. Over what four years? Three yeah, years? something like that. So she gonna get a bag, but it's just like, man, some. Hey, think about this: the brokest NBA player making five sixty five. Am I right? If that's what you want to call broke, I show yeah. take that. <laughs> Am I but right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Contract ten day deals, right? And they making five sixty five. Right, these girls over here working their whole season off and only making seventy k. Shit, crazy. That's why I say, that why I say it, bro. If you literally can get oh the whole whip, all the women to just come to the game, you'll damn near be making more than the men. You, you know what my wife say when I tell her to go uh, support the WNBA? She was like, "They need to get in the kitchen, <laughs> go cook a meal." I'm like, yo, like, why you don't, why you don't support the women? She's like, I don't want to watch that shit. And it's, it's crazy, bro. It's like, it baffles me, dog. Uh, you would think women would support the women, and it's like the men support the WNBA more than the women, dog. Yeah. Hold on, say that again. The men support the WNBA more. Hold than on, one more time. The man support the WNBA, and I want that to be very, very clear. And facts. Uh, facts. So, so, uh, man, I'm, I'm probably about to say some stuff that is not going to be taken well. Uh, so, but I, but I want to start out by saying that, uh, I think they paid fairly. I, I, I think when you look at the revenue that the league bring in, they're paid fairly. We we look at seventy thousand dollars, and we're comparing it to the NBA. But they're getting paid seventy thousand dollars to play basketball for four months. I mean, <laughs> and you get an apartment and a free car for four months worth of work. Four months. These are the same people. The same people that complain that they not they being paid fairly are the same people that turn around and say that the NBA players are getting paid too much, right? All right. It's funny that you said that men are supporting this league more uh, than women. I want to I want to bring a little bit of clarity to it. Financially, the WNBA shouldn't exist. They don't make enough revenue to support their own league. The NBA supports the WNBA. So the revenue that is generated from the NBA, these male players, a portion of that goes to the WNBA to keep the league afloat. If it wasn't for that, this league would fall because on their own, they don't make enough money to sustain and play out the contracts and sustain their own league. Now, a lot of that is because it's like a 25, I think it's 25 years old, something like that. It may be older than that now. 25 year old league, right? Um, And they just haven't had 
So it's, it's like we were saying earlier about the stars in the NBA. Uh, they didn't really start getting paid until that's why a lot of people credit Magic and Bird to that era of Magic, Bird, the Pistons. That is when the NBA started gaining traction. The media deals start coming. Uh, and then in comes Michael Jordan, takes it through the roof, uh, and everybody started getting paid more money. I say this, this moment right here with this draft is so important for the WNBA because you have your magic, you have your your bird, you have your Michael Jordan. They were all just drafted. <laughs> you know, and I mean you have some other players. I'm and I don't want to say that and disrespect the players that are already there, but what I'm talking about putting butts in seats, those players were just drafted. Um, so you have that. If you support them, and you in the in the WNBA can create some parity between these players, then I think you will start to see the league take off. Um, the goal of this league should be to get out from under the NBA's wing, so that you can do things your own way, and support yourself. And the NBA will probably love nothing more than to see this league go out and branch out on its own. Um, so the notion that this is a sexist thing and it's just like they're not paying women because uh of uh misogyny it's like no like the men are literally the ones who are making this happen for they're, they're funding this league pretty much um uh, so it, because when you start looking at other women outside of the wnba in in other sports like uh i'm trying to think maybe a Ronda Rousey. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have any problem getting paid. You know what I'm saying? This is a league problem. This has nothing to do with men versus women. This is this league is just not generating enough revenue. It would be like players in the G League complaining that they don't get paid enough money. It's like, no, you get paid what because the NBA is supporting you, you get paid whatever revenue you generate you that's what you're gonna earn um it's it's simple finances it's, it has nothing to do with anything else other than finances bro, i don't i don't even know why this is even the thing <laughs> all the time bro I, I i don't even try to have this argument no more i literally just gonna say the three things for the rest of my life until both uh, i pray to god i don't have to do that for the rest of my life hopefully it just lasts just this year and then they finally turn a profit for the first time in their league history right just i'm going to say that again for the people <laughs> that did not hear that they're going to turn a profit which actually make a profit do not lose money for the first time in their league history it's a big possibility that can possibly happen this year if the people literally go out and support i'm talking about from the women to the simp men Plain and simple. I'll stop all this talk and just go to the game. That's true. Watch the game. Turn off all the other bull job and watch the game. Okay. Actually support them. I should better be seeing record numbers, not just from Caitlin Clark, from other teams. Thank you very much because the ladies in the WNBA act like they're afraid to say it, but love to blame the NBA players who support them heavily in the men for some odd reason i don't know why but like i said they can't uh talk bad about us because one we support them and actually watch them true now i haven't owned a wnba jersey only one i ever owned without well, that ain't even a wnba jersey that was just a usa jersey and that was done Staley. but I support y'all in many ways. And actually going to go to a game. Actually plan on going to a game. So, like I said, step it up. This is y'all time to shine, ladies. Y'all time to shine. I'm putting that pressure on y'all. So, if you don't go out there, I don't want to hear nothing else. Because you didn't. I'm, I'm done talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> support, support these women, please. Yeah, please stop complaining, get off your ass, and support them. Fill up the stadiums. Thank you.
Support them. Mm. Buy a jersey. Look at that. Cheryl Swift oh. signed my shit. Do that. She need to sign it again. Hopefully, yeah. it'll go viral and she'll see it. Yeah, she does. Hmm. And actually take a picture with you. That'll be fine. But uh, Drake versus everybody. <laughs> now, I think last week we was talking about uh, J. Cole apologizing, which I'm still tripping off and I'm still... I got one uh, text from the last part. I don't know why they were so angry about um, the apology. Like, he did what was right in his soul. Or and I'm like, bro, this is rap, bro. Don't talk to me about it. nothing about no rap. This ain't no street stuff, bro. This is literally just rap. I'm better than you. That's like me just going outside playing basketball with somebody. It's just sharp. Dude just called me out because I said I'm the best and I was scared to play. That's pretty much all it is. And the man can rap, bro. That, that's the thing that's tripping me out. Like, bro, come on. But uh, during that same week, the main man, Drake, dropped his diss. Everybody thought it was AI at first, even myself at first. Because I was like, I don't know, man, but this thing's snapping. Whoever <laughs> rapped on this is snapping. Then it was confirmed, like, oh, no, nah, this is Drake. i like, ooh, ooh. And one thing that folks can never say about Drake, you may like him, you may love him, you may hate him. But one thing Drake going to always do, he want that smoke. He want that smoke. W- win or lose, he going to go out there. I'll at least give him that much. He going to go out there and battle. At least try to. Cole. You need to take some notes, my brother. <laughs> this is rap, man. It's your legacy on the line. And he went off on everybody. Went off on everybody, especially Kendrick. Him and uh, Rick Ross going at it right now. I don't know what's up with Ross right now. Ross just, I, I think Ross just can't take an L right now, boy. He just can't take an L right now. <laughs> he just, uh, I don't know, man. I think I didn't even really like Ross diss track. It was just, yeah, it, 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 yeah. <laughs> it ain't nobody listening to it. I have yet to hear somebody. Oh, I hear more about his antics than the actual song. That lets you know that uh, song is mid, my brother. But what's y'all thoughts, man? Man, man, Ross came out with some, you know, with some Ross shit, man. The stuff Ross was talking on that track was like any other Ross song, man. Talking about his marble floors and all that stuff like that. Uh, the antics in the in the shit was funny though. Like <laughs> all the shit talking he was doing to Drake. Talking about he got a big nosy BBL Drizzy. <laughs> You know, he's got a nose job and all this shit. It's funny. You know, you got to think, man, Ross Ross went up against one of the biggest, most distant motherfuckers in the game in 50 Cent. So it's like, and he came out, you know, he, he still survived that. He survived oh, that. Oh, I'm about to say came out what? <laughs> well, I mean, I, it, look. Yeah, I, yeah, I, he, he came out. I love to say 50 killed him in that one. But financially. He came out on top. He came out on top. Cause he did. He did. He did. He did. You gotta you think. think he, you gotta think about the lawsuit. How much? How much? Fifty had to come out the pocket on that one. You know, Ross did did win the financial battle in that beef, but at the same time, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, your boy Fifty was was hitting low blows. Dropped the man's BM sex tape. Took his other BM out on dates and patting his sons on the head and shit, man. Hit, chilling with Floyd Mayweather. He was doing a lot of petty stuff, man. But I'll say this much, man. Ross, he he I think he got sneak dissed in that uh in that Drake shit. So he had to come back and say something, man. I think that's the reason why. I, you know, at first I thought he just inserted himself in the beat, but that's not really what happened. Drake dissed him. He came back with the smoke, you know, trying to say something. 
And, you know, Ross is a social media antics type guy. He'll go back and forth with you on social media popping shit. But, you know, as far as that diss, it was mid for show. I think uh, Kendrick, his fucking diss was like, you know, it was all right. Drake fucking murdered everybody, in my opinion. I think Drake did. Drake Drake just dropped the atomic bomb on everybody and got niggas scrambling around right now trying to seek shelter. J. Cole had a dope-ass diss, and then he fucked it up by uh, coming out and apologizing. That was the worst thing he could have ever did, uh, especially with a diss like that, bro. You, you, you got to let that shit marinate for at least a month before you come back apologizing and shit. So Cole let us all down. Drake is being Drake. He's ready for the smoke. It's a million niggas against one. And he's uh he's swinging, bro. He's getting jumped on, but he's swinging and he's knocking a couple niggas out in the process. So almost all of these niggas. He's knocking almost all of these niggas out. <laughs> it's crazy though, man. But yeah, that's what I got to say about it. Yeah, so I mean, for me. I, I was, I heard the Drake this. I, I, I don't know, man. It's, it just seems like, because uh, I know at first they were saying it was AI, and then they confirmed that it was real. And I just felt like, and even the Kendrick disc was, they said, rumored it was AI. And I feel like, is, is that what we're doing? Are we, are we putting out tracks? And then if they don't hit, we're going to say they AI. But if people, People love them then. Yeah, I wrote all of that. Yeah. Is that what we're doing now in hip hop? <laughs> it's like, that's what it comes to. Uh, but uh, the things that Drake said in the diss, man, I thought they were, you know, classic diss record. I mean, solid diss record. He had some stuff to say about Kendrick. He said he had some stuff to say about everybody. Uh, he said the things about Ross. Ross came back uh, with his track. I mean, from a from a beat standpoint, I thought Ross this track musically was the best one, but uh that's because I mean Ross is known for picking the best beats. <laughs> uh but but when I heard Ross this and I started seeing the antics, then I realized I was like, okay, this is why J. Cole apologized and bowed out of this because it he 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 wanted he probably wanted this to stay at oh I can rap better than you and I'm the best and then Ross is just Ross took it to like talking about the man knows and shit <laughs> it is it's just like he probably didn't want part of that uh, I don't know but um overall man I think you know I think Drake may be up in this um until we get. I don't know. Is, is the Kendrick track real? Is that is that a real track? The new one? Yeah. Not too sure, man. This is just you on mute. My, my fault. Even if it was, I'd be like, hey, ain't, ain't nothing I would just be like, ah. yeah. He probably said like a little bit. He, what he said about if that was real, what he said about J. Cole. I'm like, okay, that was a little dead, but then like, ah, you can keep that. But too. I've heard Kendrick rap better than that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm like, is this is this Kendrick? Like, I, I don't know, but I don't know. It's I would I would love to see it keep going though. You know, I, I want to see it. I want to see him. You know, give me some more bars, bro. Like, take the gloves off. You know, um, put it on wax though. You know, Ross talking a lot of stuff on social media, man. We we need to hear you rap though. You know, and. And, and Ross can rap. I just don't know if he's. I, I don't know because okay, here's the thing. Ross has the ability to make a diss track that is. You remember? You remember? You remember when he went at Birdman? When Ross went at Birdman? Mm -hmm. I thought that was masterful. <laughs> I thought that was like systematically breaking a man down. And that's not what I saw heard from Ross on that diss track. I think if we take that approach with Drake, we'll be talking about a different ball game. Oh, 
but the thing about this, the thing about all of this beef is just like it's kind of tough to go with Drake when go at Drake when everybody that's in these beefs have already given him so much props. It's, 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 it's like he's just referencing it, these old moments where like, yeah, you gave me a Rolex and Drake is solid. And, and it's like, and now you got to go back and beef with him and take back all that nice stuff that you said about him after you said that like you, you give him all this credit for some of the stuff he's done for your career and all this. And it's like, it just doesn't stick. It doesn't hit home, you know, uh, when, when you kind of take all that back, but I don't know, man, it's exciting just to see some, some kind of pulse in hip hop from the men, uh, because the women have been running hip hop here for, for about, uh, I mean, for quite some time now, actually about a good year. It's just been, uh, Glorilla, Sexy Red, Megan Thee Stallion, and Cardi B, and, uh, uh, they've been dominating the chart, so it's just it's, it's nice to see that the men have a pulse now. And, and uh, hopefully, like I said, that's why I said I hope he just keeps going, man, and we get some some more records. I think they I think they need to start dropping projects now. You know, <laughs> it just give me a whole EP, like uh, let's put some stuff that we can hear on the radio, man. Let's hear some radio tracks. Uh, but then if they go that route, I think you know, you know Drake Drake. Drake is the one person that can make a disc record a billboard number one. Um, he's done it before. So um, I don't know, man. It's just, it's not the place that I saw this going when it first started. When, when Kendrick first dropped that first disc, I didn't see it going like this. Um, but I'm not mad at the place that it's at right now. Uh, I think it's good for hip hop. Well, yeah, like I said, man, I, I spent next week be talking about some, but who knows, man? This, this beef is just crazy, man. This just crazy. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was going to be a short week because uh, just prepping up for the NFL draft, which is next week. So expect the big show out of us. And uh, may even have uh, a special uh, episode with a special guest. Don't know just yet, but hey, stay tuned. But uh, as always, before we get up out of here, man, let the guys shout out what they got going on and all that good stuff. Man, you know, as always, we back. Oh, with oh. It. oh go ahead. As always, we back at it. Back with it another week, man. You already know, man. Go Braves again. You already know we're going for that ring this year. Hey, Strider got hurt, but you know, hey, things happen, injuries happen. We're gonna bounce back this year, man. We going, we going to the ship, man. I gotta get my ring. You already know what's up, man. But yeah, shout outs. You already know where to find me. Oh, right here. <laughs> I'll let your boy. Yeah, so uh, uh, before I sign off, I just want to uh, say uh, RIP to. I was uh, just about to do it when it came to me, but go ahead, go ahead. To uh, one of our uh, one of our tailgate kings uh, passed away over the weekend, Justin Thigpen, uh affectionately known as JT. Uh, great stand up guy. Uh, we're going to miss him for sure. We, uh, we'll be dedicating this tailgate season to him. Uh, so, yeah, RP, JT. Rest in peace to that brother, man. But, uh, y'all already know where to uh, find Ted, even though he ain't do the point like he normally do. But I'm going to give him an opportunity. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. right there. Come on. <laughs> there right there. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> well also uh ladies and gentlemen uh i ain't mean to uh, cut him off i thought he was gonna uh say rest in peace to uh oj oh him too but, yeah but rest in peace to uh uh to the juice man oj simpson uh 
I know it's controversial for a lot of folks, but it's still uh God bless the dead, uh praying for his uh family, his children, and uh anybody uh, associated with him. So uh God bless to them. And as always, I'm your host, Mr. Brinsky Shaw. Uh, you know, we drop every Wednesday on the road to 500 subs. Uh, before the summer, I'm trying to uh, get the uh, 600 subscribers. That means work has to be done. That means people got to keep supporting, keep liking the video, people, because that helps with the algorithm and let's go out to more people. Uh, as always, thank you and appreciate it. I know this has been a short uh, episode, but that was it. Next week, we're going to be talking strictly NFL draft. May sprinkle some stuff in there, but strictly NFL draft. It's going to be a big week. So y'all just be prepared for all that. But as always, Signing off. Fuck Auburn. Roll Tide.